longer and more, you know. And all those, they came out. And at the time, to get them out, because they were glued in, I had to cut all my hair off. I had almost like a brush cut going by an ear. And I go, who the hell is this? You know? Because if I gave you a brush cut right now, you'd feel totally fucked up, wouldn't you? Yeah. The hair is important to a person's identity, right? Yeah. So I got stripped of my hair. I got stripped of my illegal rights that the cost would help me. Okay. Um, a lot of things were happening in my life, like my computers went on the blink. Uh, my TV went on the blink. My what camera went blank. Uh, everything was going wrong for me. It's like somebody put a curse on me. Everything that was going wrong with me at the time. My computer broke. My computer shut down. Just like that. My TV, I was watching it. A few days after, that shut down. My video camera, that broke down. I broke a mirror. They say you break a mirror and that's seven years bad luck. It's an old wise tale, but that's what they say. Do you believe it? I don't know. Everything was, and then I had this older guy. I was somebody's mistress. Do you know what a mistress is? I had this older guy that was paying me a lot of money to be with him, okay? Anyway, this is when I realized I was living the wrong way. I said, how can I, what, why, why is all these bad things happening to me? The boyfriend, things falling apart, losing my hair, having to go to court. I hit rock bottom in life. I never been so low in my life. Okay, I got very depressed. Having no hair, I was very depressed. I felt suicidal. Okay, very bad. I felt suicidal. I really felt like I was going to take my life. Okay. And anyway, um, I said, well, maybe if I start doing good things and start living the right way. So what I did is I, this, this older guy that kept on paying me like a large amount of money to be with me, um, he would, and I, I would put the stakes up so high so he wouldn't be bothered with me. He, I say, he say, well, what can I get you to make you go with me? I say, a new computer, thinking that he wouldn't do it, right? Sure enough, he wanted to buy me a brand new computer. So I'm thinking, this is not right for me to be doing this. I'm seeing he's a married man. But what I did was, and he kept on, he kept on stalking me too. This guy, he, he phoned me over and over again. He tried to rape me in my apartment. Okay. And I, he's on top of me, trying to pin me down, and I took my, I did this, I got him off me, right? And, um, what I, to get him to stop harassing me, I phoned his wife. Oh. And I said, your husband's here. And the daughter got on the phone, and the daughter says, you're a fucking liar. I'm going to go over there anywhere I live. I'm going to go over there and beat the fuck out of you. I go, yeah, well, your father's wearing gray slacks right now and a blue shirt. And that's exactly what he wore about the that his, No, that's what he's wearing that day. Yeah. So then they started to believe me. They go, they go, the mother got on the phone, the wife, and she said, how old are you? Right? She wanted to know a bit more about me, right? So I figured, oh my God, I got them on my ass. Like they could do something bad to me, right? Going out with their father. And then I started, I had these other guys that I have one night stands with or whatever because I was living out in the country and I felt like living out in the country I wasn't able to really experiment with my sexuality, but with moving to the city, I had all kinds of opportunities, okay? So I, I go to the bar, and I have one night stands, whatever, and all these different guys knew where I lived after. Then I started getting scared. I started getting like a panic attack and like paranoia, thinking, you know about Cheryl Shepard? Eh? You ever fancy tell you about that? No. Well, some girl we knew a long time ago. She had a boyfriend. Anyway, she's been missing. Nobody knows where she is. Okay, we know, I know people like that, girls that have gone missing, right? Hanging around the wrong crowd. So I had, I went through a, like a meltdown in that apartment, okay? Where I felt like everything's going bad for me. I feel suicidal, okay? And I said to myself, how could I make things go better for myself? And I figured a lot of people know where I live. This is scary. I can go out and like, somebody could kill me. It's scary feeling. And then, but then that ex-boyfriend wanted to burn my apartment down. And I figured, oh my God, that's when I stopped clo opening up my door. The guys that I was fooling around with at one night stands, I stopped answering my door. Um, I stopped going to the bars and partying. And that's when I started asking, like, maybe if I change my life and get rid of that guy that was paying me a lot of money. Because I figured I was, the reason why I was, all these bad things were happening to me is because I wasn't living the right way. So I figured if I make it, they start living the right way, maybe things will start going my way after, like better. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's when I had to go to court and all these bad things were happening to me. That's when I called your mother, where I was suicidal almost, right? And I says, I'm gonna need support. Oh well, oh well, I got Francine and Johnny to worry about, she said, they need me. 
So after all being abused by all these people and by the law and going to court and having no hair and losing my who I really am, I okay. My own sister, my own family were the last ones to even if you wanted to take care of me, you really couldn't because of, this is another layer of why you couldn't. Another layer. I was in jail and suicidal myself. I had to go on probation for two years. I had to go to anger management classes. Those are embarrassing, eh? <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, the re it's, it's funny what happened though. He's the one who should have got charged, and he's the one who should have went to anger management. But because he was sneaking, did everything behind the scenes, and the cops couldn't prove anything or do any or couldn't help me, it was me that landed up going to jail, and me that landed up going to anger management. When it was him that drove me to do it. Yeah, I know the fucked up public system is, eh? Yeah, but anyway, two years, we had a, I had a peace bomb, he couldn't come around me, and I couldn't be around him, but he still managed to come to my home and knock on my door and still harass me. I had to move away. I had to move out of that city. He told me, if I ever see you with another guy, I'm going to tell him what you are. I'm going to call you a bunch of names and make a big scene if I ever see you in Hamilton again with another guy, right? So, anyway, like the CAS, okay? Or anybody that abused you, like your mother or whatever, it's very empowering to actually, in the future, meet that person. Face You're going to meet them in court. Yeah, okay, I'll face your abuser, because I want to face the guy that did that to me. I, commu I communicate with him once in a while on text, via text, eh? Yeah. And I have a plan to make him easier. I want to show you something. To show him that he didn't get the better of him. You know what I mean? You know what you want to do to your mom one day? Probably you'd like to you know, maybe have a fantasy in your head to meet your mom one day and say, whatever he tried to do to me didn't work. Look who but I that's am That's revenge now. is to become healthier and more successful. Well, that's what I want to tell my abuser. The guy that did all this stuff to me, I want to meet him one day with a big smile and say, what are you trying to do to me by stirring my lock and stealing my mail and putting my number in the mail and box and all this other stuff, making me go to court? I'm here and I lived through all that and I'm okay. Uh, so that's, so that's what my mom does. My mom says, I don't want to hear about it. It's all about Stephanie. Many times she's telling me that in the last little while. She cuts me right off. She doesn't want to talk about you. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how that makes me feel? I don't know. She talks to me about Stephanie. I don't want to. I don't want to talk negative, but I do believe I'm going to die from either, hopefully not suicide, but another aspect is either suicide or through um, one of these workers who abused me. You know what I mean? Because I was abused by a lot of different workers. Like I what have. Do you think a come back and get you? Yeah. yeah. But like when you get older, people's faces change. Yeah, but I have. I, I have pictures of every single abuser. Yes, what I'm trying to say about you though is. Maybe you should stop putting your face on there because your face is going to change and they won't recognize you. They've got to see you in person. And if they don't know what that you look like, how they going to meet them in court? Well, they can get you after court or see what you look like. Well, what am I supposed to do? Be silent and not, and not take them to court? No, no, nobody's saying that, right? But you know, like Martin Luther King, JFK, and all these other people that speak out, they get silenced, like Harvey Milk, right? Yeah. This guy right here told me you want nothing to do with me. Well, how does he know he doesn't even know me? He's a black bitch. Of course he's going to say that. Anything to, to put you through turmoil. He said I would, I would scream and say, where's my mommy? Where's my mommy? Or where's my auntie? And uh, it's not literally like that, but, you know, I would scream and say, where's my family? And they would say, shut up, go to bed, they don't want you. Yeah, he said that to all the other kids, too. Yeah, all of us. Yeah, but... Was he was also having sex with a 12 year old girl. Yeah, but was his facts straight? No, he, he, on he's top, from Jamaica. On top of the abuse she already went through, he was abusing you too, yeah. verbally and mentally. And then he turns around and says, I'm a hero. <laughs> Most people shouldn't have jobs like that, yeah. right? No. He works with children still. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's awful. But I think uh, I think when I when I when I do die, my mom will, will say exactly that. I don't want to hear about it. It's all about Stephanie. I don't know. It's like I uh, think so too. I think Stephanie so. plans. She plans on bringing Stephanie to Sudbury and all that, eh? And if she wants to know if Grandma's willing willing to meet Stephanie, and Grandma says I'm not going all the way to Sudbury. Maybe she can just Timmins with her. Yeah. Stephanie, Stephanie's gonna go to Timmins? 
Yeah, and Sudbury. Frank's, Francie's going to bring her camping and all that. At, um, I, I think they get along because they both put their own kids in the CAS. But I told you too, women's brains are different. But I think it's about that, but it's also they can relate because they're the both same more hooked on. Yeah. Well, not just the brain part. I, I acknowledge that. But also they both are fucked up. They you both, notice, you gotta be fucking stupid in the head to put your kid in the CAS. Francine's, I don't care how, how young you are. Francine's friends are all drug abusers and, and uh, unfit mothers. Francine hangs around the same level of people. I don't know Stephanie, I don't know my sister, then it's just fucked in the head. Why? Because she put her own kid in the CAS. Well, she's doing, she's doing pretty good. I guess it's true what they say. What do they say? Hope is useless in a world where money is more important than life itself. Remember that. Hope is useless. I've given up hope on everybody in this world. You know what I mean? I've given up on everybody. 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 You met, you met me here. I took courage. But you see, I'm the only one that's part of the family. All the other ones, they don't want to... They don't want to face the facts, so it's a little... That's not going to be just now, that's going to be 5, 10, 20 years from now. They're not going to change. No, Francine's not going to change. 5, 10, 20 years from now, if we're still alive, this is what we'll be doing. It's going to make sense of things. Still? Yeah. It's a battle. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. You know? It's going to pick up the pieces. And you and me are the only ones that are on the ball, really. Ernie's in his own world with his job and his girlfriend and his house and his truck. Russell's out to lunch. And Francine's finding herself grandma's maybe not be around. I get worried though sometimes because some of the people I'm exposing surely abused me. But they abused many, many other children throughout the decades, throughout the years. And it's like, you know what I mean? I expose what I expose, but it's like I told a, not a friend, but an ally or a peer. There's a difference between an ally and a peer and a friend. A peer is somebody I think you look up to, like somebody like. Yeah, like an ally, you know what I mean? And but um, like I was telling this kid, we know what we know about this corporation, but what is it that we don't know? That's what I want to find out. You know what I mean? Because these corporations have these corporations have a lot of secrets. Scouts Canada. Still a lot we don't know about Scouts Canada. All these organizations, but all these organizations are magnets to pedophiles. You know what's funny? I remember, I remember when I was in Timmins, when I was 19, uh, I was with, uh, what's his name, Peter Birch, and they, you know, they're very into Catholics and all that, and going to church. And I was right in front of his son, and I said, ooh, priests, they're fucking pedophiles, you gotta watch out for them. Peter Birch got all upset. It's true though. It's true. You watch the news lately and guys are getting in getting charged all the time. It's true. It's true. Why is it that when why is it that when a priest gets caught abusing a kid and then later on gets caught trying to cover it up, society freaks out. Yeah, and not only that, but yeah, then the when other priests will help them cover it up too. But and then, then and then they'll get a job at another church. But, but, but then but but the, when it happens in children's aid society, nobody cares. Because you were like a throwaway child and fucked up and everything. But a lot of kids were taken away from good homes. I know that's hard to believe, but some kids actually had good homes. Because the parents didn't have the time or didn't know how to look after them, so they got rid of them. 